Here's an exercise that involves both reading and writing files using strings. It's not really unformatted input because it talks about reading individual words. And in this context, with no other definition of what a word is, we can assume that it's the same definition that Scanf uses. On assignment five, don't make that assumption. On assignment five, the definition of a word is a little bit different. So the goal is to read this uh, fruit.txt that we've already seen um, and to read individual words from it and then take each word as we read it and write it out to this file called deliciousfruit.txt, obviously excluding all non-delicious things. Uh, and we write one thing per line. So it's a pretty straightforward um, task. It's just a question of how do we implement it. Now, hopefully the task itself is clear. And uh, we can assume that each word will have a length of at most 100 characters. Now, this means basically we could create a character array of length 100, and that would be sufficient to read all of the words that we need. We don't have to worry about the case where scanf stops halfway through a word. Um, that said, we still need to make sure we have the right bounds checking available to scanf so that uh, we're programming defensively, but we this is this allows us to, to not have to worry about the case where word gets split. Okay, so I've already got the code to open my file, so I open my file for reading, my input file. I have my uh, guard here to verify that the file opened successfully because if it didn't, the program can't continue. And so I just return from main if that happens. Then I open my output file, and actually I still need to check that my output file opened successfully. Uh, it's less likely, I guess, that my output file somehow fails to open because the problem I would typically have in that case is something with permissions or disk space, which is less likely than this situation where if your input file doesn't open, maybe it's because you typed the file name wrong. But in any case, I should check both ways. I should never attempt to use the return value of fopen until I've verified that it isn't null. Down here, I'm already closing my two files, as I mentioned in a previous video. We, I really recommend adding the f close call as soon as you write f open, because it's really easy to forget otherwise. And there is a sort of interesting hidden problem here, which is, what if I'm about to exit the program at this point here? On line 27, if I'm about to exit because the output file didn't open, well, when did I ever close the input file? Well, I didn't. If I got to line 24, the input file was open successfully, which means I do have to close it. But if I exit the program on line 28, I never get down to line 33, which is the close, the F close call. So I need to make sure that I call F close on my input file if I exit the program due to the output file not opening. Okay, so I've got everything set up. Now I just have to read every word out of the file. So I read words from the input file uh, one at a time and write them to the output file uh, as they are read. So I don't need to store all of the words together. I just read one word and then I send it back out again. I read another word, then I send it back out again. I have to make sure that I don't uh, write that word that I'm not supposed to. So if ever I see this word here, and to be clear uh, on a specification on an exam or assignment, if it says except for the word pineapple and then it uses capitalization, you should assume that means that it's this specific version. So any other capitalization of it, lowercase p or uppercase i or something like that, wouldn't count, only this exact word. Very common exam question, though, is, well, don't allow any variant of this word, even the lowercase version, to get through. That would require a little bit more processing. All right, so in this case, uh, I want to read words one at a time, so I'm going to need some string to store my words. So I'll create a string of length, hmm. No word will have a length um, longer than 100. A word will have a length of at most 100 characters. I guess that means a word could have length 100. So I need to make sure that my array has length 101 to allow for space for that null terminator. And then I'll write a loop that reads words one at a time. I'm going to call fscanf, give it my input file, and then say go into the input file and read up to 100 characters per word. So we know that fscanf reads a single word, which is a sequence of consecutive characters without white space. Um, up to and including this number of characters. So whichever comes first, the first space or the end of uh, my, my 100 characters, that's when fscanf stops. So I hand it my word array, and then I keep going as long as this equals one, as long as fscanf was able to read um, that one word that I asked it for. Okay, so now what I wanna do is, um, I'm just gonna make a note to myself. Don't write the word if it is 
Nothing awful. Okay. Uh, but for now, I'll just write every word directly back out to my output file. I want to make sure that that works before I refine my method. So I use fprintf, I print to my output file, the string, and then a new line, because it said to write the words one per line. All right. So we'll try that. And then we'll see if we can make that uh, omit the word that I don't want. So I, I run this, read fruit, I wait over here, maybe I hit refresh. Uh, for my output file to show up. There it is, deliciousfruit.txt. Uh, there it is, there's my names of fruit. Of course, there's an error in my delicious fruit because this is there and not delicious. And one could argue maybe not even a fruit. Okay, so uh, in that case, uh, I guess I have to go back and complete this to do, which is I don't want to write the word if it is the word pineapple. So what I want to do is somehow determine whether the word I'm looking at is this. And uh, an easy mistake to make, even after you've learned the correct method, it's still easy to accidentally make this mistake. It is not allowed, I'm going to actually write not allowed, to write something like this. If word equals pineapple. And uh, just for the sake of, okay, found the word pineapple. Let's just see what happens if I try this. And we'll notice that the compiler does give us some kind of strange warning. This is a very unusual looking warning. Comparison with string literal results in unspecified behavior. Ooh. So what it's talking about, what a string literal is, is the double quoted string. And what the compiler is actually trying to tell you is that this is not doing the comparison you think it is. You're not asking if the string is equal to this string. You're asking if this array's memory address is equal to the memory address of this random string you've put in, which isn't what you want. So don't do this. When I say not allowed, I guess what I should mean is that it won't do you any favors on an exam. This does not answer the question. It absolutely, under no circumstances, will implement what we want. Um, so we don't want to do this. In other languages, there is a feature like this. Even in C++, you can ask if two strings are equal using a double equals sign, but you can't do it in C. In C, if you want to ask if two strings are equal, what you have to do is either compare them yourself, character by character, or use a library function that loops over them and does that for you. That's it. The only way of comparing two strings is looping over the characters. Um, the library function in question is called string compare, and we know already that string compare um, it doesn't have any vowels in it because the library was designed before they invented vowels. Um, so string compare takes two strings. I want to take the, the string uh, with my word and the string pineapple. And I want to compare them. So what string compare actually does is decides if this string here is less than, greater than, or equal to this string. It returns negative, uh, some negative value if this is less than this. It returns a positive value if this is greater than this, and it returns confusingly, zero if they are equal. Now, um, in the notes from last week, I talked about what does it mean for strings to be less than or greater than each other. Basically, a string is less than another string if it would come before that string in the dictionary. But for now, we don't care about that. We only want to test if they're equal. So strangely, string compare returns zero if the two strings are equal, which is sort of the opposite of what we expect. So if this happens, then I'm actually going to print this as a, for the sake of debugging. I found the word. All right. And then uh, in my else, I'm going to, uh, if I'm not looking at the word pineapple, in my else clause, that is where I'm actually going to send the word to the output file. And maybe you, you'd realize that if you were to write this, you'd probably use a not equals here and just put this inside the if statement. But for the sake of illustrating what string compare is really doing, because it is quite confusing, another reason it's nice that exams are open book, it is quite confusing, but string compare returns zero if the two strings are equal. So we'll try this. OK, wait, press Enter a couple of times. Try this. And then you can see it did find the word pineapple once, which is what we expect. Uh, and if we go take a look at our output file, which still gets dumped to this window here, we'll notice the word pineapple isn't there. So we successfully excluded that word by testing at each step if the word we were looking at was the word um, pineapple and then just ignoring it if that was the case. So I'll just rerun it one more time without that extra print statement because the prompt didn't say anything about generating some output like found the word pineapple. So we should make sure our programs don't do that. So I run it again. I go take a look and my output file still doesn't contain the word pineapple.